So the question is, do tone woods matter on electric guitars, Chris? Well, the answer is complicated. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for our custom-designed t-shirts and other swag. So you had a good question. Yeah, you gotta ask, you know. What was it again? I've already forgotten. So, Age. yeah, the question is, boxers or briefs, Chris? Boxer briefs. It's the only way to go. <laughs> now, the question is, does the wood of an electric guitar matter? Now, we talked about, does paint color matter? We and did. that was a total troll that made a lot of people upset. <laughs> but Aww. the real question, the woods, a lot of people ask. Does it matter? So, yeah, we got to talk about it. All right, so if you're asking a keyboard commando on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, they might answer no. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone spent a lot of money on a very precious guitar with special tone woods and stuff. Karina. <laughs> sure. Uh, they will probably answer yes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ask me, um, not being a guitar builder, but geeking out and picking the brains of lots of them, uh, my answer is it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And it also depends upon what you mean by does it matter. So, does it matter aesthetically? Yes. Does it matter based upon weight or feel? Yes. Stability? Yes. Uh, but the big question is, does the wood on an electric guitar matter when it comes to tone? That's really the big question. What do you think? I think it does to a certain extent. You know, I think when it gets down to it, so I chose these because it's a real stark difference. Mm -hmm. We've got an alder body, and we've got a mahogany body with a maple cap. You can't see it under the gold top, but there's a maple cap on here. Mm -hmm. Definitely matters. Totally different vibe, different weight, different sustain, different feel. The reason I want to talk about it is sometimes people call and they're wondering, like on a Strat, alder, ash, pine. Yeah. I think there's less of a difference there. I don't think that matters as much. I think once you get to a similar family of woods, a similar density, mm -hmm. same body style, maybe not as much of a big deal. This is a big deal, I think. Yeah, so let's talk about what most people would answer that don't think tone woods matter. Um, th most people on the internet would say, no, the pickups are really what determine the sound. And that's partly true. But it's not the whole story. So, can can we just kind of geek about it? Like, can we just get into it and like do it. get nerdy? You okay. Do it. So let's talk about these two first of all, because it's a great example of tone woods. This is alder, maple neck, maple fingerboard, right? It's it's a bolt-on body. Okay. Yeah. That is a set neck, mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard, mahogany body, maple cap. Okay. Now we should talk about the the history of these two guitars. When these started, mm -hmm. Leo Fender was making tellies with pine, then with ash. Later, he used alder, mm -hmm. and his decisions for doing that was a ba was based upon availability and workability. Okay, mm -hmm. the story goes from Ted McCarty that at Gibson, they used a maple cap to bring out brightness in the sound of the guitar. Now we know that er there were early all mahogany Les Pauls, mm -hmm. but most Les Pauls are maple <clears throat> with this cap. SGs, which was the Les Paul of the early 60s, and then the SG, is all mahogany, mm -hmm. and it's thinner, and it's got maybe the same pickups and a slightly different tone. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us? If an SG can have a similar construction to this, similar, not the same, um, and have a, with the same pickups, a dramatically different tone, then it tells us that something's going on. Yeah. Is it the wood that's being used? Is it because it's thinner and doesn't have a metal cap that it has a slightly different tone. So here's the first thing that I think guitar players need to appreciate about pickups. Pickups are microphones, effectively. That's all a pickup is. It's a, it, a microphone is an electromagnet. Mm -hmm. It's a coil that's picking up vibrations. In a different design, that's what a pickup is doing. And with some of the early, some real sensitive pickups, you can sing into them yeah. and it picks it up. It picks up the vibrations of your voice. So if they're microphones, then all they're doing is they're picking up what's going on with the strings. And they're picking them up in different ways. A single coil, a P90, 
a jazz master pickup, a, a humbucking pickup, path style, active, all of these things are variations upon the same idea. And they're all they're doing is picking up what the string's doing. Now, with microphones, you and I know we, we sing, right? Yeah. If you sing into different microphones, your voice will sound slightly different. Oh yeah. But you still sound like Cooper Greenberg. You have to. Right? Yeah. yeah. You can put effects on that voice, mm -hmm. but you still sound like Cooper Greenberg, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of the same way. People need to think of guitars in this way, is the pickups are microphones, and so you can change pickups, but there's a fundamental that's there that those pickups are amplifying, and that fundamental doesn't change. Yeah. So... The other reason that these are great guitars is because not only are they different tone woods, but they are entirely different designs. The bolt-on neck and the longer scale length of this, along with the fact that this is a tremolo, a floating tremolo equipped guitar, is going to inherently change how these strings behave and what components in the guitar have on the string. So here's what I will say. Start off, what things affect it the most? So I think the construction like Scale length, that's a shorter scale length, mm -hmm. right? We've talked on this video with acoustics before that shorter scale lengths tend to be warmer for a bunch of reasons. I've been talking on email with a customer about this, yeah. about why shorter scale lengths are, and I'm trying to articulate things I've heard from builders because they understand it better than I do. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're, when you shorten the scale, the frets get closer together. So the harmonics along the string on its vibrating length get closer together. And you know, if you pick closer to the bridge, it's brighter. If you click, you know, pick over here, it's warmer. Yeah. If you play, you know, a B up here versus a B over here, it's totally different. Totally sound. different yeah. sound. So all of that comes into play. So with a longer scale length, it's a bit brighter. There's more tension on the strings. That's going to come through in the pickups. If I put humbucking pickups in this, if I take those pickups out and put them in this, this will not sound like that guitar. And vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. You can take, that'd look, that'd look weird, right? Take a, a pick guard with three single coils and slap it on. I don't want to see that. On a Les Paul. It will, it will sound different. Yeah. It won't sound like a Strat because of the scale length and because of the neck. The bridge, like how much a Les Paul sustains is part of its tone. Mm -hmm. You know, so think about this. I was talking to uh, a friend of ours this morning about this. If uh, An acoustic guitar's tone, in part, is inherently uh, equal parts of like the body's response and things, but part of it is sustain, mm -hmm. right? If it was really loud with no sustain, it'd sound like a banjo, you know? Mm -hmm. If it sustained, if it, you struck an acoustic guitar note and it sustained as long as the Les Paul, it'd be weird. It wouldn't sound... Yeah like you expect an acoustic guitar to yeah. sound. So these characteristics and attributes are part of it. Um, and so I think that design plays a really, really big role in what it sounds like. I think there's other things like the saddles and the nut. These are the things other than your pick or They're your fingers. In contact. Right, that are having direct contact. More so the saddles, because think about it. Once you bar a cord, it's now the fret wire and the saddles that are making contact. Yeah. So that'll affect things. Stainless steel frets versus nickel silver frets. Uh, bent steel saddles, block saddles, all of yeah. that stuff. Bone nut, synthetic nut, like how much it's dampening or fraying things. Because, So how do you understand tone? Wow. Like how Philosophical do you, question. Well, okay. So maybe let me put it to you this way. If you play different guitars and they have different tones, yeah. how do you describe that? For me, and I'm sure that a lot of people are the same, I kind of think of it as like a shape. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that comes from seeing certain graphics in like a recording, right. you know, mindset. But like you the oscilloscope see. or yeah, like yeah. a graphic EQ. So, you know, sometimes maybe it comes from synths with like a triangle wave versus square wave and all that and sawtooth. But I think a lot of times I think about a strat as a very round, more narrow tone. I think about this as kind of this bulky almost squared off tone and it's mm -hmm. like it's it's definitely just influenced by words that we use you know sure. we use chunky we use yeah. creamy you know there's different bristle that's yeah one of my favorites. there's all kinds of words and i think it informs the size and the shape that we 
think of when it comes to a tone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's tough to sort of describe. And I think a lot of times too, my understanding of the tone of guitar comes from the weight that I feel while playing it, you sure. know? And it informs the sustain of the instrument, obviously. Um, but when I'm playing like a Brad Paisley Telecaster and it's like negative five pounds, then it's like, oh, this thing's flying and it's super light and it's bright and all that. Yeah. And then when you play a non-chambered Les Paul, it's like, this is doom metal. This is thick, you know right. what I'm saying? It's just, yeah, it's hard to articulate, but I think people that play them know that feeling of that you just kind of get this innate understanding of what the tone is. Right, and there's yeah. a lot of commonalities that we we kind of hear across certain styles of guitar. Yeah. And I think that's important to understand how much the design impacts it. So a telly that's Asher Alder pretty much sounds like a telly. Yeah. A, a Strat that's Asher Alder or Mahogany pretty much sounds like a Strat. Yeah. There's little differences. And those little differences are where this question lies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we did this review recently on the, the Frampton Phoenix, right? And there's a lot going on with that guitar, but one thing is it's all mahogany. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be more of this mid-range to it that I've found on all, all mahogany Les Pauls. Now, how much of that's in my head is what most people wonder. Yeah. You know, it, would you hear that if you didn't know that? And we've done some blindfold tests to, mm -hmm. to indicate that, yeah, you can hear things. Like, there's truth here to what's going on. But... The reason I asked you your question is I think the way we think about it and the way you described it is how most of us think about it is a good starting point to understand what's going on with the physics yeah. of a guitar. So if you think of a graphic EQ, the one thing that I want people to understand is with a guitar, whether it's an electric guitar or an acoustic instrument, just with the guitar, you're never adding frequencies. You have a bass line and you're pulling down on frequencies. Subtractive synthesis. That's what's going on. Right, Zach? Because, <laughs> because what you're doing is you are dampening certain frequencies, either on purpose or by accident. Usually if it's a well-designed instrument, mm -hmm. it's on purpose through various things. So like the nut material. A softer nut material is going to have a greater dampening effect on yeah. certain frequencies than a harder nut material is going to be. Yeah. When we talk about tone woods, it's the same thing. So if, if you take a Les Paul, your strings are anchored at the fretboard. It's coming over this nut. It's, anchor, it's going over the saddles and anchoring into the bridge. And it's got a really solid connection. So we have all of that sustain that Les Pauls are known for. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing robbing the string from vibrations. That's why it sustains longer. There's no, there's no floating tremolo. Tellies are the same way. It's string through body. They're yeah. anchored very well. There's nothing, there's no sympathetic resonance from vibrations that's going to pull away, rob those vibrations of the strings. So you get a lot of sustain. But what happens is that the, the body's going to respond. If you don't believe me, take an electric guitar, put your ear up to it, like that, and strike a note. And it's very loud and resonant. It's like a, it's like a uh, tuning fork. Yeah. You know, it rings. And different guitars sound different, which yeah. means that different frequencies are going through the guitar. So the point of that is... Some guitars are going to dampen certain frequencies more. Bass frequencies, mid frequencies, high frequencies. A Les Paul's mass, I think, tends to dampen high frequencies more. Yeah. So they're still there, they're ringing, but there's certain high, high notes that aren't there, and you get kind of the smoother, growly, yeah. guttural sound. And uh, so I was asking our, our buddy John, John Scully, if you watch this, uh, what's the trillest, brightest electric guitar you've ever played or heard? And my answer is an all-metal one. I've played a, a, like a metal-bodied, metal-necked yeah. guitar. Yeah. And the thing about that is that's basically a really light material that's not t dampening anything. Yeah. And it's very bright, like almost painfully bright. You can put different pickups that will like accentuate different frequencies, but inherently that's what the guitar is giving you. Yeah. And so that means that the body that it's made out of, whatever it's constituted out of, matters. Yeah. So so here's the question on a strat. Does the fretboard matter? No. <laughs> I think it does. But very minutely. That's the thing is I I was gonna bring this up in the video. I didn't know if it would be a different one, but even more so than does the body wood matter? It's always, well, yeah. I was actually looking for the rosewood 
instead of the maple. And, and I it's think like, okay. I, I, I tend to prefer on Strat's Rosewood and mm-hmm. on Telly's Maple, and I guarantee you it's because of feel and, and aesthetics. Yeah. I like the look of a Strat with a ro- dark you know, fingerboard, mm-hmm. and I like the look of a Telly with a blonde fingerboard. Um, and I like the feel of maple fingerboards, generally speaking. Yeah. Tight ebony fingerboards also feel great. So I think the, f- I think the fretboard is more about feel and aesthetics over other things. Yeah. Um, it's part of the neck, so it has an effect, but I don't think it's something that most people would audibly hear the difference of. Right. Talking about strats, you said this was older. Yep. If you buy certain models of strats, and we've kind of talked about this before, if you buy it in a different finish, it's now ash, or yep. it's roasted pine. Yep. And the decision Fender is making is solely about aesthetics in that regard. Yeah. So at the beginning I said does tone would matter. On aesthetics it does, on weight it does. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, you build this out of mesquite and it'll look great, but it'll weigh 50 pounds. Yeah. Know? So. Yeah, it's tough because some people get so attached to, well, I want an ash body. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I got a ash body natural Telecaster. Mm-hmm. I love that guitar. And then if you wanted a natural Telecaster now, you're gonna get a roasted pine body. And so when you stop being able to get a hold of what you think is the sound, and then you play something that looks a little bit different, but A and B, they might not have much of a tonal difference, I think it's tough to get attached to a certain wood. That being said, if you're getting a Les Paul, any type, obviously a Gibson is going to be a mahogany body, but probably wouldn't be super interested in an ash Les Paul. It'll be an African mahogany body, but that's for our podcast if you listen Boom. to it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that design choice by Fender says that Fender feels that most of what your tone is going to be is the work that they've done crafting the design of the guitar and in the pickups, and they're probably very much right. Yeah. You know, that's where most of it goes. I still think that there's a quotient of it that is going to be found in the body wood. We've seen things like uh, the Virginia Strat that Eric Johnson found, and it turns out it was sassafras of all things. You know, they've made mahogany strats, and I've played them, and they do sound a little bit different. Even when I didn't know they were mahogany strats, yeah. I was like, this sounds a little darker. What's going on? Um, and so, yeah, but depending upon your design, some of the things that the body can do or the neck can do are going to just be mitigated by other larger contributing factors to the mm-hmm. guitar. And, you know, I think a good example, and it's not a builder we carry, unfortunately, but PRS, Paul Reed Smith is is extremely geeky. He gets down to, like, the very minutest details of the guitars mm-hmm. um, because he's nerdy. And, you know, I love him for that because he looks at all these little things. And at the end of the day, he's he's right on about what affects things. Now, you might like PRS guitars, you might not like PRS guitars, but he's one of the builders still around today who's saying, you know, these things contribute. Oh, and people like Ted McCarty and Leo Fender back in the day, they were onto something, Yeah. you know? And it's not about age, it's about the physics and how you're building guitars and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so yeah, it matters. It matters to varying degrees. The other thing too is like, does the body shape matter? And I think it does. Josh and I were having this conversation that, you know, it's really not about the shape, but there's a certain mass that's mm-hmm. available. A hollow body guitar or a semi-hollow body guitar Having less mass allows more mids to go through because I think the mass of a guitar, kind of the weight of a solid body, can pull down on those mids depending upon what material they're made out of. And so you see all these guys that will play heavy music and they will go with semi-hollow or hollow body guitars because there's this wonderful sound to it. Uh, There's a difference in the tone that you get. There's a difference in the sustain. And you can get great, like, controllable feedback if you want it. Yeah. Um, if you change the shape of that guitar beyond a certain amount, I think there's kind of there's a there's a point of the body in line with the strings, probably right in, in line parallel to them, and then the wings off to a certain point that will engage yeah. with what's going on more or less. So depending upon how they're anchored to the body, and how the neck is anchored, so that's the that's the determining factors. But beyond that, you could make it look like whatever, and I don't think it matters. Yeah. You look at a bossy instruments, and it's like, it's all about ergonomics and stuff. Yeah. But it's to a, it's like, once you've reached a certain point, if you take this and turn it into a Steinberger, it will sound different. Yeah. So, so yeah, it matters. But here's yeah. the real question. 
If it matters, does it matter to the guy in the third row? No. It's the person playing. Yeah. I mean, you put, so I think going back to fretboards, White Strat, Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, totally different sound, but it's not coming from the fretboard. It's coming from the guy playing it. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. the bone tone. Um, and I think, you know, when you're talking semi hollows, I think like you hear BB King or Chuck Berry, you know that that's them playing because of the sound, but also their their runs. They yeah. they have their signature. It could be different you know? guitars. It could be different amps. Yeah. Because all this plays a role too. How long is your cable? Is it straight or coiled? How many pedals are you going through? Are they uh, you know bypass or or you know buffered? What kind of amp are you going? Like all of these things, yeah. you can't just say this is the only thing that matters. All of it matters to varying degrees, and then. Does it matter to the person there? Probably not. No. If you're playing in a mix with a band, they're hearing an electric guitar. Now, I, I'll tell you a story. Um, outside of San Antonio, where we live, there's a small little town of Hondo. Mm -hmm. And every year they do the Maze Maze. Yeah. You know, it's a corn maze. It's a cool festival. I love going out there. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I never get lost for some reason, but that's another story. Anyways, one year there was a band they were, uh, that was out there playing. And as I'm walking by, I'm hearing this guy, they're playing Dire Straits. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's hitting all those licks. And I, I, but there's something that's kind of off about it. For one, he's not Mark Knopfler. But, you know, I walk up and he's got, he's doing this on an Ibanez, like RG, a nice one, with a pick. I'm like, well, that's Sultans of Swing, you need your fingers. And... You know, a Strat would be nice. Yeah, in between but Strat But probably not yeah. an Ibanez RG with, like, active pickups. It was probably not the ideal guitar. But all that being said, the guy killed it. I'm not taking anything away from him. But yeah. the tone was a little off. And I noticed it because I'm sensitive to that song and will probably never get to play as well as Mark Knopfler or get close to playing that. I, it's one of my favorite songs. I love that song. Yeah. But I'm like, you, you can't play with a pick. That's the first thing. And, like, you need to kind of dial in the tone. But that didn't matter to anybody else. Yeah. And, it, and if it didn't matter to the guy playing, it doesn't matter. Because that's who this really matters to. Your tone really matters to you. And if the tone sucks, you suck. Like, have you ever had that situation? <laughs> oh. Well, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, have you ever plugged in and, like, something's wrong and then you just don't play well? Yeah. I know what you're talking about. The Venerable Cooper Greenberg has done this. I mean, this. the thing is, like, there's some times when you just, you're like, whatever, you know? You just get and through it's really it. fun. But, yeah, it, if it's, like, a high-stakes situation and you're not in your, your zone, right. you're done. Now, switch it. Yeah. You're feeling it. The guitar sounds great. It feels great. Yeah. Everything feels like you're dialed in. Suddenly, you're one with the universe. Yeah. And you play Lights Out. Yeah. Right? And I think that's the thing, like when you pick up a new type of guitar that's not your main mm -hmm. and you, you play on it at home a million times, you bring it out for the first time to a show, it's going to behave differently on the stage. Case in point, I played a Strat forever and then right. brought my Jazzmaster to a show. I'm like, where'd I go? Yeah. Where am I at? Right All now? the controls yeah. are different and yeah. it's like this is not comfortable. Yeah. It's funny, I've been in these moments where I've played... And I, it's so embarrassing to admit. I'll be like, man, if only I play electric like that on our YouTube channel, people wouldn't think I suck at electric guitar. Whatever, dude. <laughs> but Whatever. sometimes the planets align. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think whether it's acoustic or electric, yeah. I think at the end of the day, the way the guitar feels and the way it sounds matters the most to you. Yeah. What gets communicated to the crowd is going to vary depending upon who's there, but your musicianship is the thing that's always going to come across. Yeah. So if you want Ash... Go for it, probably for aesthetic reasons. Mm -hmm. But let, yeah, I'm just about, let's be honest about what the reasons are. You gotta do it. And let's also be honest about the impact it may or may not have. Yeah. You know, most people buy a Les Paul with a maple top that's not gold top because mm -hmm. they love the way the flamed maple looks. Absolutely. I'm 100% there for it. Yeah. And I think Ted McCarty was right that it also changes the tone. So win win. Here's what I think we should do uh, this is gonna be an extracurricular. So let's say it's, Homework. it's Patreon, it's, uh, it's podcast, it's whatever. I think that we should both make a list, acoustic and electric, in order of most important to least important of things that affect the tone. And I think that we'll both come up with something similar, but between acoustic and electric, they're going to be vastly different. Yeah. But I think that's an interesting point, and then maybe we should ask some other people and, and maybe get some, some more builder view as well. And but, I think it's, it's great... 
I think this is great guidance for people who are playing guitar, looking for guitar, if they're anything like me, like obsessing about details and then yeah. trying to understand them within context because I think that's what's really important. Um, so that you can feel you made a good purchase, that you have the right thing for what you're doing, mm -hmm. and you know, find that comfort zone that allows you to play and be the best you. Yes. Because so, that's what it's all about. So. so yeah, at the end of the day, the question is, does the wood used to build an electric guitar matter? Yes. Yep. It matters on the aesthetics. It matters on the feel. It matters on the weight for the builder. It matters on the workability and the availability. And it does affect tone to greater or lesser extent. So hopefully that answers your question. And if you are a keyboard commander uh, that says, I'm wrong, come at me, bro. So <laughs> A challenge. A challenge. Let's well, get your meanest I, comments. I think this is a fair conversation. I think everyone's, conversation, everyone's yeah. covered. So anyways, at the end of the day, I always say the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing. That's really what's most important. Don't get too caught up in the weeds. So if you play guitar, you like guitar, and you're not subscribed to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. And if you'd like to check out more about what we do as a store, you can go to our website, which is? It's alamomusic.com. Alamomusic. All right. You got to go. Check it out. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.